Okay, so I kind of alluded to this before that there's this way to recover information about a single bit of data. Um, what is of interest to us? So let's let's step back for a second and let's just look at what happens if we take some of these algorithms um, that we haven't really looked at in detail and assume that we can recover a single bit of information from them. Um, and what we're going to assume, so this is going to be very general um, to start with, right, is we have this data being processed by an operation. We have data A, we have data B. Um, so data A is here, data B is here. Um, and let's say data B is unknown. So we don't know what that is, but we do know what data A is. Um, if we wanted to figure out what data A is, right, this is the, the or data B, sorry, is, because we know A, we know what that is. Um, what do we need to know about C, right? So let's assume here if we fully knew C, um, we could figure out what B is pretty quickly um, through, you know, either some small search, just a small enough search space or some other sort of information. Um, now, it might be a lot to assume we know everything about C, right? And so this is the case for these algorithms. They're designed to hide C. Um, but what if, what if we learn a little bit about C? What if we learn some bits of C or something like that? And, and so that's where these attacks um, go in. So let's let's dive into that operation. Let's make that operation a little more obvious. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use an XOR. So we're going to take A, which is known, B, which is unknown. We're going to XOR, XOR them together um, and pass them through a lookup table. So if we XOR them together, um, you know, what that means is if you have like 10111, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. It just XORs each bit at a time, right? So you get 0, 0, 0, 1. I didn't line these up very well, sorry. Uh, 1, 1, right? So it's just XORing it, uh, each of the input bits. It's then going to pass it through a lookup table. Um, so the lookup table is simply uh, something that maps every input to a different output. And the reason we do this is we sort of have, and I've, tr I've tried to show it a little bit here, and we'll dig into this in a second, right? There's a lot of structure to the input because what you can imagine is if you change a single bit here, so let's let's go back to this uh, A and B. And sorry, I've lost my pen, so I'm using my finger on this. <laughs> um, so it's a little messier than normal. Um, zero one zero zero right so if we were to change that zero to one um the problem with this or the thing that we don't necessarily like is it's only going to affect the output bit um, and this is actually bad if you're trying to hide uh, information so if you're trying to hide b uh, we don't like that because then if an attacker toggles a single bit of input at a um, it's really obvious that what bit uh, what the, the, the value of B was, uh, because they can see that at a single point in C. So um, as part of these algorithms, what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce this lookup table that make, that sort of breaks that connection. Um, so that lookup table um, means that we no longer have a single bit of output depending on a single bit of input, um, but a single bit of output depends on every bit of the input. Um, so if you change any bit of the input, um, potentially, you know, any other bit of the output could change. And it, it depends what value of the lookup table um, you, you're hitting here. But the point is that it's no longer an exact bit to bit mapping. Um, so we can play with this, right? So um, there's a, a more extensive online lab um, that you can you can play with this in It's part of the chip whisper repo um, that I'll link to in the, uh, the description here. Um, but basically, you have the input uh, processing that's done like this. So you can see we literally generate a random lookup table and we just pass it through the lookup table um, and return the value. So that lookup table uh, is should have like one-to-one -one mapping basically. So any input value um, should map to a single given output value. So I, this was just a quick, a quick example. I don't know if that's actually the case here. Um, but you're just trying to show the the general idea of how this is uh, is working, right? So you have a lookup table that just processes the input uh, and returns it. Um, and what this means is, for example, if you XOR um, A XOR B, so if you just took that XOR operation, we fixed B, so B is our secret value, remember I'm claiming. Um, and then I sweep on the, the X axis here, the argument through from zero to 255. You can see this extremely obvious pattern, 
right? So, and then the output here is the, the result. And you can see this pattern basically maps from input to output, and it's super obvious. Um, when we add the lookup table in here, it looks exactly like this. So this is just that random lookup table. Um, and so the, this actually breaks the correlation between um, the, the two inputs um, and the output. So that's something that's a very nice property when you're designing cryptographic algorithms. Um, it's also going to give us an advantage as an attacker, as it turns out. Um, so the attack model is now um, that we don't know the full output of C, uh, but we only get a single bit of it. So um, this is really what we're trying to do. And if you're interested in seeing how this works, there is sort of a, a lab that will we'll run through this. Um, the basic idea of it is that the attacker can probe a single bit of the output bus, um, but they don't know, they don't even need to know which bit of the output bus they probe. Um, but because we have this relationship where um, if you choose one bit of output, right, the only way that bit will be uh, correct is if you know the full input to the lookup table, um, it actually allows us to brute force. So again, we know B, right, we don't know A, but if we know a single bit um, of the, or sorry, we, we don't know B, B is supposed to be the secret. I misspoke there. Um, we would know A, we don't know B. Uh, A changes, right? We know what it is every time. But the idea here is that um, we can take a single bit of the output and we do this guess and check operation where we say, you know, if this bit was correct, the only way the bit is correct is this if A is, you know, seven or 32 or 56 or whatever, because um, there's going to be a few solutions to this. And then we'll, we'll try it, you know, with different values um, until we finally get a, a single possible value um, for B, right? So the single possible value for B based on the input that we know of A. So it makes, doesn't make a ton of sense when you're just describing it like that. Um, so if you're interested in seeing how it works, you can go through um, the full lab to, to understand that. But uh, what I'll talk about next is how this attacker capabilities can be done with power analysis instead. So if you believe me that the single bit of the output bus is sufficient, um, then you can check out the next one. But if you want to see how this works in detail, um, uh, you know, I do encourage you to go through the, the lab that I'll link below because it's pretty interesting to see how it works.